Hey, this is a quick overview of chapter 4. We are going to go by different key issues, so if you feel the need to uh, jump to another key issue, please fast forward in the video here. Uh, you don't need to sit through all of this. First thing we're going to look at is where um, popular and folk culture are kind of distributed um, throughout the world. It's kind of the main element of key issue 1 here. Uh, <clears throat> so keep in mind what culture is. Culture is simply the body of material traits, customary beliefs, and social norms. Basically what people do in their day-to-day -day activities. Uh, this can be a tradition over time as people have grown, <clears throat> gone accustomed to doing certain things a certain way. Uh, there's two different kinds of culture within a culture, if you will. You have material culture. These are going to be artifacts. Um, things you can basically touch, feel, um, any of that, this would be clothing, uh, cars, food, any of that. Non-material is basically what a culture kind of believes is believes in. This is going to be like religion, beliefs, values, uh, institutions. Um, this is all major kind of thought processes within a religion. Um, keep in mind what a habit is. A habit is kind of the most singular thing here. Um, my, remember my example in class was every night before I go to bed, I fill a cup of water up, I let it sit for an hour, and then I decide to drink the water right before I go to bed. Not everybody does that, so therefore that is going to be a habit. Now when everybody continues to do this habit within a culture, it then becomes a custom, then it's customary, and then it's kind of ingrained with your culture. If you are just doing it on your own, then you are simply uh, just performing a habit. Example of a custom here, um, remember is a repetitive act by a group that kind of defines them. Uh, we have some Muslim men here, obviously they all wear white, the headdresses, etc. Uh, moving on over here, uh, we have uh, Jewish people here, obviously wearing all black with the hats um, and their hair um, in a certain manner as well. Once again, customs include anything with behavior, clothing, music, food, and sports and attitude. Uh, any of this can be done by an entire group. Um, one of the big ones here is even time. If you arrive early, if you arrive late, that can all be part of a custom. Uh, in Japan, you need to arrive a little bit late. Um, in the United States, we're pretty prompt on time, and we want you to be always be on time. Um, <clears throat> Keep in mind there's two kind of categories of customs. Remember we looked at two categories of culture before. Uh, you have your daily necessities, food, clothing, hygiene, shelter, and then you have your leisure activities. So <clears throat> customs within a culture, what do you day to day to kind of need, survive, your daily routine, and then what do you do for fun within your culture. Um, keep in mind we kind of hope everyone in the United States is brushing their teeth. That's kind of part of American culture here. Uh, whereas you have the miswalk in the world Air, <clears throat> Arab world where we talked about um, how they kind of chew on this and this is kind of how they go about uh, cleaning their teeth. So everybody needs to brush their teeth. Two different cultures do it two distinct different ways. Uh, now in the United States, a necessity is what we wear. We need our clothing, but we choose to kind of use uh, jeans as kind of def our defining what we wear for pants. However, again, and then in some cultures, you're going to have the salwar kameez, uh, which is pretty popular in Pakistan, which is basically what they wear day to day for their daily necessities. Again, two different cultures have different two different styles of clothing. Um, overall, we're now going to kind of move into uh, leisure activities. So in the United States, it's pretty common. We like to watch TV, chill, relax. Not every culture has the same uh, kind of belief for that in other cultures, okay, uh, they partake in other fun extracurricular activities as you see here. Um, in the United States, a big popular sport here is going to be baseball. <clears throat> um, other sports um, have a different impact somewhere else. This is obviously the little stick game we looked at in class here. Um, don't actually remember what it's called, but again, that's going to be kind of an example of folk culture there. Uh, so now we're going to be starting to look at the distinct differences between folk and popular culture. Uh, these are ones we really kind of want to know uh, going through um, the slideshow here. So folk culture again is static, which simply means it does not really move. Uh, homogenous simply means you're going to have like people that are very similar are going to be practicing a certain kind of folk culture. And again, these start in isolated places. Um, don't really always know the origin of them. So keep in mind, when you have full culture, you have very similar people practicing, and they're also very isolated, and it do does not tend to move often. Uh, now moving on with the full culture, uh, you have 
pop culture on the other end, which is going to be more dynamic, which means it's always changing. Um, what's popular now is not going to be popular in a year from now, um, even from five years from now. Um, this is usually in larger societies, which have a lot of different uh, heterogeneous places and people, which make it a very, very diverse type of culture. A few things about the origin of culture. One, um, the hearth is anonymous. It's unrecorded. We're not usually sure. Uh, multiple hearths, so get them simply means that you can have the same idea or same type of culture developed in two separate places. It's not because of diffusion uh, for folk culture. Usually it's just two separate groups that came up with a similar idea, so therefore it's pretty isolated. But that is also another reason why folk culture might change. So if you have two different groups in two different places, slowly over time because they're isolated that culture is going to change because they are not communicating with each other again this is pretty straightforward unrecorded dates originators you have no idea um, it does not simply mean if you do know who originated it it's automatically not full culture but it's just a good generalization and usually it's passed over from one place to another uh, through oral tradition um, Basically, the beginning of it, it's kind of unwritten. Obviously, today, a lot of different folk culture could be written down, uh, but not as the origins for it. Um, again, here we have a couple of examples of folk culture. Um, obviously, this is in isolated areas where this is not as popular. Certain garments. Uh, origins of popular culture, on the other hand, you're going to have uh, product of developed countries. Uh, think United States. Think Europe. Um, Keep in mind, you normally can find the actual traceable person or place where this begins. Um, this is going to be a key element of popular culture. And again, keep in mind, it's usually made for profit, okay? Or somebody wants to make money off of this somehow, some way. Uh, the final part for this is it's time sensitive. That simply means that whatever is going on now, whatever popular, that's what's going to help make it popular. Again, for a year from now, it might not be the same thing that's popular that it previously was. Um, keep in mind all these different designers. When I was in high school, I think a really big one was Tommy Hilfiger, Ralph Lauren. Um, I don't think that's quite as popular today. Uh, same thing with Abercrombie and Fitch was a big one. But as you can see, all these designers always change their style every couple months, every couple years. Um, that's a good way of knowing that, that it's kind of popular uh, culture. Um, moving on through here, obviously more trademarks here. Some of the times these are popular, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they have cool items that everyone wants, sometimes they do not. Uh, same thing for with popular music. Um, you generally know uh, the origin, the artist, and usually it's for profit. Uh, the diffusion of the folk culture is generally at a smaller scale. What that means simply is it's not going to travel as far and it's usually going to travel very slow. The key part of this, it's usually done through migration, which again is going to be relocation diffusion. Uh, moving on to diffusion of popular culture. Uh, again, this is hierarchical diffusion, uh, which simply means it may skip people. Um, it's not going to hit everyone right away. Um, the really, really popular people or the people that have a lot of influence are going to start it. Then it's slowly going to skip people, go to the, like, the next sector who's popular, the next sector who has influence, and then it'll slowly trickle down to everybody. Uh, it diffuses pretty rapidly. Uh, think about the mannequin challenge, how fast that was, how everyone was doing it, and then two weeks later, nobody else is doing it. Um, usually this is helpful because of modern communication. Uh, it diffuses through the internet. The internet is not popular culture. Television is not really popular culture. It's a mode of how we diffuse popular culture. All right, now kind of looking at the hearse of popular culture. Um, again, technology, Silicon Valley, that's going to be San Francisco, San Jose, Japan, South Korea. These are big places that are key for technology and development and kind of where these ideas start. Music, a couple of ideas here. Nashville is going to be kind of the main hub for um, country music. Motown <clears throat> is going to be Detroit. And then urban centers, L.A., uh, New York City for hip-hop, Atlanta here and there. Uh, movies, a big hearth is Hollywood, obviously, Los Angeles, Bollywood in India. And then also Egypt is a uh, main hub in kind of the Arab world for um, their popular culture for movies. Fashion, again, think New York City, Paris, London, L.A., Usually ideas usually start from a certain spot over and over and over again. The latest fashion trends are usually New York City and Paris, and then they slowly trickle down to the rest um, of Europe and the United States.
And now to the distribution of the full culture. Um, again, it's going to be a combination of a couple factors of what distributes full culture, or actually maybe what doesn't distribute full culture. <clears throat> the local and physical cultural factors. Um, if you're in a very mountainous region, obviously you're going to be pretty isolated. Um, for the most part, that is that's what sums up full culture is that it's isolated from other groups, lakes, mountains, deserts. Um, that is what slowed ideas and why you have full culture today is because they have stayed in these isolated groups uh, for so long. Uh, again, this is how religion has been um, kind of heavily influenced uh, throughout the world as well. Uh, art's a really good example here. As you can see in this location <clears throat> of the world, China, or modern day here, Tibet, um, you have all these different uh, religions here. However, because they were isolated, they had different ways of kind of depicting their art or religion in their art and usually this was because of life experiences now if this was popular culture and they could move about they weren't isolated all this different art would be very 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 similar okay uh, and, uh, now we're looking then <clears throat> to the distribution of popular culture remember it's gonna be the exact opposite of full culture it's widely distributed all around the world anybody that has access to mass communication internet television would be exposed to this um, this is going to be kind of a stimulus diffusion as well. Um, we kind of talked about it before being hierarchical, but it's also stimulus at times too because uh, you have an idea, it's very similar to another idea. You see something on the internet and you change it a little bit and that's giving you a different idea. Uh, jeans, tennis shoes, they all change kind of designers or the way they're designed, uh, but they usually get their inspiration from an original source. Um, and then usually the obstacle to popular culture is cost. Remember the whole point of a lot of popular culture is to make that dollar. Um, but sometimes you have obstacles, um, income being a very, very big one uh, to popular culture. So in more developed countries, you have more income. Therefore, you have more access to popular culture. Okay, Less developed countries, you're going to have more full culture, mainly because they do not have access to popular culture. And even if they did, uh, the income would not quite be there for them to kind of be fully exposed to a lot of popular culture. Um, big one for this, obviously. Uh, you can see McDonald's is a great example of popular culture. Uh, countries with McDonald's and countries without McDonald's. Okay, uh, McDonald's is definitely going to be a big part of popular culture. And again, we also have these regional areas where they all have their own kind of McDonald's, if you will. Uh, so that's kind of a little bit stimulus diffusion where it's very similar. Okay, uh, but at the same time, um, it is mainly because of pop culture. Um, now we're going to folk and pop music here. Uh, this should be pretty kind of straightforward for us. Folk music originates anonymously. Um, transmitted orally. Um, content usually revolves around life or life events. Think about agriculture. Um, think about love, marriage, death, anything traumatic in somebody's life. Uh, there's probably a song made about it. The entire village culture usually sings about it in remembrance around holidays. Um, but it's definitely more earthy kind of music. Uh, not in the way it just sounds, but also if there are lyrics involved with it as well. Um, like other folk artifacts, again, folk music is static, doesn't move from time to time, and it doesn't change over time. Uh, it's very similar, the same folk songs you're going to hear in one spot 100 years later, you might hear the exact same songs. They change uh, relatively few times over the years. Pop music, obviously, on the other hand, is different. The key, obviously, is that it's sold as a recording. You know who is creating it. Uh, there's usually technology creating it and technology diffusing it and getting it out there to the rest of the world. Um, usually there's strong connections with other musicians, artists, um, so it's very similar because they've kind of been exposed to that other aspect of music. Uh, again, usually <clears throat> popular music is very dynamic. Again, that's always changing, always shifting. Um, the song, you could listen to top 40 radio pop music when I was in high school it sounds entirely different than pop music today even the hip hop's different the country's different um, the bubblegum pop the everyday Justin Bieber Justin Timberlake's sounded completely different than they did before so it's always changing based on the taste of the time or the preferences uh, so now we're gonna kinda move on to the folk and popular sports around the world um, again same very concept sports Sports are going to originate um, in isolated areas uh, via relocation diffusion um, if they ever do get diffused. 
uh, once a sport then becomes focused or becomes more profitable or realizes that sport can make money. Uh, one example, Major League Baseball, <clears throat> NFL didn't always make a lot of money. Um, it was just used for fun, for competitiveness. But once you have standard rules and everybody plays by them, okay, and a big market around the world um, starts following it, um, they start paying money, then it becomes a popular sport. So if it's more recreational, okay, then it's going to be folk, but if it's to a bigger market, now you're going to have that kind of moved into popular. Um, again, we kind of showed this before. Some sports have diffused more widely than others. Obviously, these are kind of pretty common here. Um, you know, this one was a kind of odd one. You kind of talk about like X Games, extreme sports here. And here we have curling. Maybe everybody knows what curling is, but you don't have as many active participants as kind of you do for football, basketball, and baseball. Um, around the world. Obviously the big one to look for here is soccer. Um, again, it is the most popular sport in the world. Um, again, keep in mind most people call it football or football if you will um, throughout the world. Um, keep in mind the origins for it um, is early England um, and then it finally diffused uh, through the rest of England through different towns, cities, and over time that game that everybody played a little bit differently now became more standard and more popular in England. Um, so therefore, you're going to have it be moved to popular culture because the game played in London, you go 20 miles down the road and it's going to be the exact same game. Now it's starting to be popular, especially kind of hundreds years ago, that would be kind of an example of popular culture uh, for that time. Uh, again, keep in mind one of the main reasons it did spread was because of the Industrial Revolution, um, because factories were sprouting up everywhere. Uh, one factory would play another factory. Um, and then leagues would start to form because all these factories wanted to play each other consistently. Uh, and then the rules were finally standardized. Uh, people then began to put or actually pay to watch these events, thus definitely making it a spectator sport, which therefore is a popular sport around the world. Uh, um, and so now how um, soccer kind of spread to the rest of the world, again, travelers to England and English travelers, and when they were trading with other countries, would bring the game to them. Uh, when people would visit England, they would see the game, and then they would take it back um, to their homeland. Keep in mind, uh, this is a key part here when you're looking at diffusion or colonization or colonialism here or imperialism. The British Empire, obviously, the people that went to Britain more uh, were from the British Empire, the colonies they had, and then those places that they actually left England to and to go back to uh, were also under British control. So keep that in mind as kind of a good example of diffusion and how kind of colonization or imperialism actually did have an impact uh, on the rest of the world. Uh, again, today soccer is by far the most popular sport in the world. Um, Usually it's often called the poor, poor man's sport because it's relatively cheap to play. You just need a ball and some area uh, to do it. Uh, but just because it's cheap and relatively easy to play does not mean it's any less of a popular sport. Okay, um, I have kind of moved fast forward here a little bit. I skipped over the Olympic sports a little bit. Um, something we didn't really get to in class were regional popular sports. Just because the entire world doesn't play it or is not interested in it doesn't mean it's not a popular sport. It can be regionally popular. So in the United States you can have... In Canada, you can have sports that are very popular here. Um, it's We have many different people in the United States, and if they all enjoy it, it's going to be kind of a popular sport. Same thing with Canada. Uh, football is a big sport that transcends both the United States and the boundary over to Canada. Uh, example here, we have Wushu. Uh, it's, a, it's an example of martial arts in China. Uh, a lot of people pay to see it. It's a big spectator sport. It's obviously the most popular sport in China. So therefore, we may not have heard of it. doesn't mean it's not. doesn't mean it's a pop a folk sport. It just means that it's popular in a certain region and we just have not heard of it. Um, a couple other ones. Rugby, very, very similar to soccer. Uh, you can find rugby very popular in any former British colonies. Um, basically, it evolved from soccer. People decided to just start picking up the ball, tackling each other for it. Obviously, it has very similar origins to uh, football as well. Um, a couple other... Um, Examples here uh, for regionally popular sports, um, think about baseball in North America, but then baseball is also popular in Japan and Korea, uh, so it doesn't have to be just a region, there can be certain spots of the world as well.